Yeah, let's just flip a switch and suddenly the barrier is gone. I saw some serious glowing happening on this thing. No, really. I, th I honestly am not blaming Wedge. Actually, one little bit. Stable time loop, all that stuff. So the Gabbies are here waiting for us. Thankfully, we are going to make very short work of them. Yeah, it ain't you guys I'm afraid of. Steam up the butt! So, we're sitting on Alexander's face. Now, while they did mention earlier that the final core was kind of located deep within him and we couldn't get there through his hands, um, where was the mention that we were gonna go in down his throat? I mean, I, I, I guess you could argue that well, where else would you get in, but at the same time, well, most people don't have holes in their hands to enter their bodies with, so it's not like we're, we're just jumping down an orifice just because biology says so, but I mean, not that I'm really surprised, but at the same time, I kind of wish they they actually mentioned it somewhere. It's like, oh, yeah, let, well, let's just go in. How about, how about actually mentioning... That this is the most viable way to get down. <laughs> Instead of going up his arms, now we're just going to straight down the gullet. Okay, alright, fine. Just Let's just talk about this. What the hell is that thing? You look like some really bad creation made of metal as if some kid made you out of Play-Doh. So while I'm not 100% fond of this boss, mainly because, well, he's just way too darn easy. I do like the idea that even though we get no explanation for the refurbisher here, that we're, we're in a giant forge of some kind. And I find that very intriguing. I mean, we're still dealing with, with robots here, but this time we're actually going to be melting them down. So, joke's on you guys now. And I'd imagine it gets pretty damn hot in here. I mean, how many fights do you have where the floor literally is lava? And not the ground, the floor. Some all doesn't count because that was an actual volcano. So technically there was magma there. Shit, I'm gonna be hit by that. Nope, okay, I made it in time. T too busy making fun of things to actually pay attention to what I'm doing. Plus, I'm way more used to the savage mode of this fight. So, uh... The slightly different order in which things happen kind of throws me off a little bit. I wish this take would actually pop cooldowns, but what do I know? So I have to give this place credit. At least, at least it tells you wh wh which part of the floor is going to turn into lava.
Yeah, have some regens, guys. So yeah, the idea here is he sucks in the robots and adds them to his own parts of his body. He literally refurbishes himself from the corpses of robots. And to, unless you actually melt them down and deny him that opportunity. And heaven forbid if he actually grows both arms. Although in Savage, you, well, before everyone learned how to burn this asshole down a bit faster, it was actually one of the mechanics. <laughs> like, oh yeah, shit, he's got both arms back and now he's gonna swing them and, and, and crush you to death. Game, haven't you gotten old with the whole FOSS thing? Like, really? Do you have to put him in every starting fight? Now, the really stupid part that I really don't like, although I understand it, is you have to wait for him to eat the corpse of this guy because the tether gives him hella defense so you're just like basically sitting here waiting just just ter cherry tapping him to death you know what happens if we actually like jump down that hole well i guess he's got a bunch of metal scrap so i guess we wouldn't go far oh he's dropping all this crap on me these are like the corpses of the robots I've like previously killed and the gobbies are just now like just, like throwing them down into the pit here. They're like, oh, let's throw them back into the forge. Stop her. That would be really hilarious if we started seeing the, the pieces of brute justice just like falling and collapsing in here. Even if they didn't actually do anything in the fight, just, just graphically, they just like fell down in here and the gobbies were like, nope, time to go back to the scrapyard. That would have been interesting. A bit much, because that will be that no that then that would be the third time they would ever use them, but at least here it actually makes sense. By refurbisher. I do love how the room is called life support, though. Okay, we're pretty lucky he actually just poofed into non existence there. Yeah, that the thing would have like crushed us to death. Whatever. What do I know? What do I know? Uh, I thought you guys were supposed to turn the barrier back on. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad you guys are actually on this. Although, do we really technically need the barrier drop because his face is hanging out outside of the barrier?
But whose plan? Ours or theirs? Yeah? Yeah? I know I'm not funny. Okay, well that would have been useful a long ass time ago. Great, so you spent all that time doing all that research and it doesn't even fucking work. Ugh. You idiot. Yeah, that guy is someone who was possessed by an Asian in 1.1. Yeah. Well, 1.0. Whatever. English is hard right now, guys. And by the way, yeah, this horn is the very horn that Nabrialis was also looking for, in addition to Tube Samadhi. Yeah, except they have the power of time travel and they can just undo the whole damn work. What happened to the cat? Like, do, do we just drop that part? Cat comes to us, drags us over here. We start communicating with it. Okay, do you understand us? Yes. Do you want to go back to your master? No. Okay, and that was it. Yeah, now would you like to actually do something, Yashola? Because right now, you've been a giant load on the plot. Nothing you've done, and you actually haven't even done anything, has actually contributed to a solution, or a problem, or whatever. At all. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So yeah, let's just loom the cat in the background only for us to realize that th there's two of them? G game, you are not funny. You are not funny. Well, there is the fact that all coral kittens kind of look the same, supposedly. Yes, so how about we actually start talking about a plan to as rescue Ron Rocks? Like, we, we keep talking, we need to rescue Ron Rocks, okay? 
not that I'm still not rooting for Team YOLO, let's just do it, but at the same time, you guys haven't discussed anything about that other than proclamations that you are going to rescue her. Dude, like seriously, guys, rescue mission. Let's plan it. One has any new dialogue. Nope. Okay. All right. So, yeah, C can we please get in the meat potatoes of what we're trying to do here? Okay. All right. So two pronged approach. Okay, I like it. I'll take it. So I really almost wish they did more with this this city on the inside. Because again, Alexander was designed to be this this utopia. The, this, the, this literally livable, movable fortress. You know, people need to actually habitate here. I mean, of course, it's natural to have all the steampunk and stuff in here, but at the same time, I really wish to see just just more of on the inside what Alexander was 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 designed to be this whole time. And let's make it about not just jumping in and out of this thing and trying to find your way around, but matter of which door do we need to knock on to find quick things in his cronies. Like just have just wander around a giant city on the inside. I think that would have been cooler. Potential danger and traps looking around every corner. Like basically, let, let, let make it something like Home Alone. Or something. Not entirely, but 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 just just, just throw a little inspiration from that. You know, just just be like walking pet like through like a booby trap city, you know, goblins make bomb ads and stuff. Sorry, cat just clawed my leg. Be interesting to, to find our way through a, a partially booby trapped house or building. I have to art smart a bunch of gobbies. So I like the, the, this idea of riding on the conveyor belts. Whee! Or gab walkers. And you all should have thrown these in the refrigerator. Sure. They seem kind of useful. And I've destroyed a bunch of them already. Exhaust vents? Ooh. Me likey. I love the gobby head decoration on the wall. <laughs> What the hell this is supposed to be, other than some torture room, or or maybe where giant things of metal are, are torn and ripped apart 
to be thrown down there for sure to be actually used? I don't know. I don't know. Metal RG, so... Yeah. Yeah, this guy, Lame Bricks Strike Box, love the name. He is a mercenary hired by Quick Things. And to be fair, Glee Flank, I don't entirely blame him. Because, well, Quick Things has no use for failing gobbies. And if you didn't crap out of this, it's gonna prevent this poor Gabby from getting killed. Well, I'm not really gonna hold it against him. I mean, at least he does say he's sorry. He's like, yeah, no, uh, I'm in it for the money. No offense or anything. Just my job. Pretty much what I say to every primal every time. Sorry. Sorry, just my job, dude. So what I really like about this fight, even though it can get frustratingly annoying sometimes, is these buttons on the floor actually all have a purpose. And not only can we hit them, but the boss can hit them, and that's actually one of the core mechanics of the fight. Now, in this version, we want to avoid the buttons at all costs, but actually in Savage, not only is the third button actually going to get use from us and the boss, here it doesn't. It, the button will work if you step on it, but it's not actually used by the boss. You actually have to use what, this, what the buttons actually do, to handle certain mechanics, which I like. So you actually have to step in the stupid on purpose. I already have the healer targeted. Duh, I'm a dumbass. That is a size. The other one is asylum. Get your crap right. So thankfully here, the buttons are actually offline, so you can step on them to your heart's content and nothing's gonna happen. Hooray. But yes, let's fire lasers all over the floor. Yeah, I like fights that, that incorporate parts of the mechanics that, that you're normally supposed to leave alone, but actually use to your advantage. I like that. Makes things a little bit more interesting. Okay, you can protect yourself. Yeah, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that, yes, I've stood in stupid in this fight myself all the time on Bard. It was so many things like I wouldn't do in time and I would like totally tunnel vision and get hit by the stuff with the buttons and yeah, make myself look at the fool. And by the way, yeah, the walls will kill you. Ready to be torn to shred, guys? I say not today. Yeah, those things hurt. Don't get hit by those. I wish I did more with those, the saws, though, that you actually had. And it, obviously, it would be difficult and placement would be difficult, but it would be kind of interesting if they were part of the mechanics you had to make use of. Shit, somebody stepped on that. Ugh, that was bullshit. That was fucking bullshit. Walked into that. You really 
really nice if Swiftcast came up about now. Yeah, this is going a little bit better now. We got him. We got him. As I accidentally pulled Dominant Cast Cure Free on the main tank and not myself. Rip MP. That will be fine. We'll be fine. We got him. No, no offense, guy. No, 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 you don't need to fall off and die. Okay, that was a bit morbid. Okay, now I feel actually kind of bad. It was never my intent to hurt any gobbies, except the gobbies who need their face pounded in quick, thanks. Kidnapping my friend, Round Rocks. But was your show actually useful for something for once? Okay, well she's here and like unguarded. I think we should get her out of here. Ron Rocks, you okay? They didn't scramble your brain, did they? No, 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 no time for your unions. Just get the fuck out of here. Yeah, sit, sit. No, no time for gawking. Okay, let, let's just go. It's a primal Yishtola. I, I don't think we really need to. That as, as part of the exposition is not necessarily at all. Would you stop talking about him? We have bigger problems on our hands. Let's take her and get her out of here. Because every moment we like sit here is, is a moment that quick thinks she can just show up and be like, Oh, Uplanders, you think they so clever with their brain thinkings? Or something. Ron Rocks, what are you doing? I don't know, for all I know, she's taking us back in time for all this crap even started. Hey, what's going on? Somebody do something! Anything? Guys? Uh, 
Uh, anyone got an air sickness bag? Uh, guys, we want to get a little bit closer and maybe actually form a circle. Or something. Or are you guys like, yeah, this couple is creepy. I'm staying the hell away from them. So wait, were we part of the summoning ritual all along? What? I don't know. I don't know. I'll stay up on time to lose on my thing, guys. Something isn't right. Three of your people just got shot, presumably dead. I mean, granted, you have no way of knowing that it wasn't the primal who did this, but... Heck, seriously, man? Okay, Schrodinger, what the hell is that all about? Do I see a shiny glowstone? I think I see a shiny glowstone. Uh, uh, y medical attention, three companions behind you, maybe, kind of, sort of. At least go over and check if they're still breathing. Hi? Yeah, it's almost like we could have taken the girl and gotten the heck out of here.
Yeah, s uh, stable time loop bullshit. Okay, don't pull the pain and suffering card on me. You've been nothing but selfish this entire time. You know, there is a little young gobby girl over here who wants nothing more than to make you happy. You really gonna disappoint her like that? Really? Really? Yeah, well you nearly fell off, so... I can't blame you for that. Oh, now we're gonna bring Jesse into the mix? Again, new friends. Even if I'm not gonna be her friend because I think she's been a selfish bitch this whole time. Yeah, yeah, Ron Rocks is pretty damn forgiving. Pretty damn forgiving. So, so what happened to Schrodinger? Yeah, you, you, you tell her. A little bigger fish to fry over here. Well, who's to say they don't have something s or someone else who can is capable of reading the Enigma Codex? We don't know that they don't. I mean, that is what they needed round rocks for, but how do we know they didn't just capture her because they were fulfilling the whole stable time loop thing? We don't. So into the heart we go. I'm really hoping they don't have somebody else who's figured out how to read the codex, because if the, if they do, we're kind of back to square one. And that would kind of be kind of crappy. Yeah, I saw you trying to run off their Tangled Up Protect. I saw that. I saw that. These guys actually move pretty damn fast. Not that they really move at all once you catch up to them, but as they're patrolling the hallway, they're like, they just like zoom across this thing. And apparently they're like setting things on fire. Kudos on them though for spewing it all around them and not just in front of them where somebody could easily get behind. More conveyor belts! Wee! Yeah, see, these things are like zooming across the hallway.
Oh, I see a shiny. What does this mean? What is it with transforming robots in this place? I know what a bunch of y'all are thinking right now. Oh my god, it's Ark! Well, actually no, technically it isn't. Because Ark isn't even original. It's based on a very old Square Enix game known as Cruise Chaser Blasty. Yeah. Yeah. That's why his name is Cruise Chaser. So yeah, while he technically technically is Ark, technically he's also not because Ark isn't original. So, and uh, fun fact, it was actually one of the the first games Uematsu actually made music for. That's kind of cool little tidbit for you. And yes, I did just look that up on Wikipedia up like ten minutes ago. Yeah. Okay. I know how to use Google. Okay. Well, let's just put it that way. <laughs> One disconnect and people standing in crap later. Let's see if this fight actually goes how it's supposed to go. So, I have both fondness for this fight and irrational hatred for it because, well, it's a pain in the ass and savage, let me tell you that. And the rotation is completely different, so I'm probably gonna stand in stupid at one point. Probably. Hopefully not, but wouldn't be surprised. Would not be surprised. I probably should not have cleric stance there. And it would help if a tank actually tanks this thing. That would be very nice. Uh, at least it's not phosphorus cronies again. That was kind of getting old. Just a wee bit. Just a bit. So yeah, people like to quote this song, but frankly, well, it's nice to hear here and there. It's not something I could like listen to like all damn day. Like people were when it first came out. Like, oh my God, I've had this song on repeat like all day. Like, and I get the joke, but. Same time, like yeah, you're you're not being funny. Okay, we can follow the mechanics and be nice people. Very very nice. You might want to run a little farther. That yeah, I'm almost going to kill you. Yeah, I love how we're actually like fighting like right in front of the crystal. Like it's literally like right here. Like I could jump off this fence and like smack my face into it. Probably ill-advised, but I could do it. Drive the ship, guys. Yep, bye Black Mages. Sorry. It is so hysterical though to watch people have that happen to them for the first time, completely unaware what is going on. I mean, of course they die, but. It's still kind of funny nonetheless. <laughs> it's like, oh, what do I do? Well, too bad, you're dead. 
I'm sad that you actually get to do that twice. Yeah, don't stand the pre-lasers. They hurt. A lot. So, hopefully we don't fail the DPS check here. With, uh, dead black mages. Hopefully. Hopefully. But some eternal dank memes. Yeah, I know I'm not funny, but everyone else makes that joke, so I had to eventually. I've had to deal with enough of this game's cheesy jokes about damn time I started making my own. Even though I'm not any more funny. At all. Not that I ever was funny in the first place, but... We already knew that. Guys, stay in the bubble, please. I mean, the bubble's gone now, but... So, I like this mechanic here, where you actually have to attack this thing from the front. Game says, fuck your positionals. I mean, it does- I mean, it is a shield. It doesn't make sense you can't just hit him right through it to break it, you know? quiet for a moment. I'm waiting for a particular thing to happen that I don't want to miss. That right there. That is why you don't line aside your healers, guys. That prey motherfucking hurts, and it would help if I had the other healer had my back on that, but no, I didn't. That was my fault. messy but got done I'm not redoing that a third time so I know that's crap but So, can I- can I jump over the fence and do something with this giant crystal here? I still love how, like, nobody's really addressing the potential problem is you're all inside a primal. You're all susceptible to tempering in here. I, 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 I guess you, 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 you could argue that the situation is 
perilous enough to, to warrant taking that risk, but it, it's something like nobody ever acknowledges. Sid, how do you know it's been growing? Well, how about you break it up into pieces? Now we'll run away with it, and then they would stop the Illuminati, and then figure out what the hell to do. Well, you're gonna be six feet under one day too quick, thanks, so, yeah. seen this before. Because I just said that. Look at here, quick thanks. Now I have the time travel all future telling journal. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's time loops are confusing. Oh, that's not a yes or no question. That's an either or. No, she technically hasn't done anything. All she's done is just, well, knock the book. And then she knocks the book back. I mean, she's a cat. The question is, where the hell did she come from in the first place? Like, who does she actually legit belong to? Okay, so we're just gonna leave the pet behind? Just, just leave her here? Okay, fine. Fine. Leave the poor little kitty to be tempered by the primal. Ugh.
Yeah, slow down there before your brain overheats. Remember, he has no use for failed gobbies. Would you look at that? Yeah, I totally saw that coming from a mile away. Great job, guys. Great job. Where are found rocks? I don't know, guys. I don't know. Well, we have the answer to this question. She's a cat. That, that, that in and of itself pretty much explains everything. And yet nothing at all, but... Oh, come on. We can check that little sucker. Like, are we seriously afraid of a bunch of goblins whose asses I've kicked before? He doesn't have time travel book anymore. Dude, you guys are a bunch of engineers. This thing is a giant hunk of metal. You'd think they'd be like more fascinated by the mechanisms for how this thing works and thus how to actually dismantle it from the inside out. Besides just a generic shutting off the core. Yeah, so far Alexander has just been like just a hunk of metal just like sitting here. I mean, I suppose we could have said the same of Bahamut, but at least Bahamut's severed head and eventual re regrowth had me kind of shitting my pants a little bit. What? Um... I, I think I'm stuck. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Question how this giant robot appeared to, uh, to us right in front of us later. I've been through worse. At least he didn't try to.
Okay, it's almost like every other primal was also sentient. Gee, I wonder. Gee, I also wonder if anybody else can read the name. Like, why? You people are engineers. You shouldn't be this dumb. Okay, let, let's just totally walk into this. Completely. I'm sure we'll be just fine. So into the temporal distortion thingy we go. When in time are we? Well, doesn't even really matter at this point. So this is Alexander Prime. Yeah, let's just totally not just, just copy exactly what we did with Bahamut, you know, like just basically just go into his consciousness and beat the shit out of him. But I don't really understand why, like, he looks a bit different than he does on the outside. Like, I'm not expecting like an exact copy, but that's kind of weird. But this is really the first time even though it was kind of just natural to assume this by being virtue of a primal, this is really the first time outside of the last five minutes in the story that it's actually been mentioned that, yes, Alexander is sentient. And it hasn't been of any importance to the story before now. Kind of to, kind of to my disappointment. Now, Bahamut was obviously much the same way as well, but Bahamut, they made a much better deal about him being a looming threat. Like I said, I mean, that, that whole crap about watching him slowly being resurrected was terrifying, terrifying. But you don't get kind of the same sense here with Alexander. They, they take a much more of a comedic tone to the story, as opposed to the much more serious and somber one of the, of the Binding Coil, which I can kind of understand. You know, a different approach to a different story. But at the same time, I can't... I'm not nearly as fond of the Alexander story. Because he's a primal, and a giant one at that. And regardless of what noble purpose he was, well at least his mechanized body, was initially created for, he's still a primal. He still should be a threat. And I don't get... And part of this is due to the fact that I can't really show it, but... I don't, at any point, get really a sense that, oh, the land is going to be drained to the aether and bad shit is going to happen if we don't take care of this problem. Like, I don't get any sense of that anywhere with this, and it really just downplays the seriousness of the situation, despite the comedic tone they, they, they take with this. Now, of course, the time travel aspect is a bit interesting. But that doesn't really start to happen until the end of the second tier. And while they do place a bit more focus on it in, in the final tier here with the, with the stable time loop, like, it... Honestly, it actually improved the story, because the story in Gordius was just, was just crap. But I almost feel like, for me, it was too little too late. Like, it made it salvageable, but, but not enjoyable. Not to say that the story is terrible. Oh, hi, Alexander from within Alexander. I'm not even going to bother trying to explain this, but... So again, let's just copy this straight from Bahamut Prime, where we need the tank limit break to solve his ultimate. Survive, not solve. English is hard, guys. So, yeah. At least here is where the fight actually gets interesting. Because, yes, time stops do happen in here. 
And what I find really amusing about it is that obviously if you're in the middle of, of your global cooldown, that the animation of it resetting actually gets frozen in time as well, and the music stops as well. So that, that is a really nice touch to it. I, I will completely give it that. And that's really the one thing this place, at least for me, actually has over Muhammad is that the fights are funner. In Savage, they can be very frustrating, but they're fun. Not, not that I thought, I thought the fights in there were terrible, But I very much actually enjoy doing the various Alexander turns, even if they do take freaking forever and entirely gloss over the concept of that the goblins are the ones building the damn robots. Like seriously, it doesn't get mentioned until, re until somewhat late in into the story and while it does get more than one mention, it's almost like an afterthought. Like how did they build this? Was it just from the knowledge of the Enigma Codex? Like what? Wait, were they actually using the, refur the refurbisher or something? Whatever, like, was this giant city that they, they meant Alexander to be, like, com completely designed with the forge or whatever? I, I, I don't know. I really... Like, they entirely gloss this over. Now, unfortunately, by virtue of the healer, I do not get to go into the time gates, but when you go into the time gates, it will transport you to the area we were previously in, along the outside ring, and into the very spot in time where the time stop where Alexander nearly shot us in the face with a laser actually occurs. And it's a DPS check in there to pretty much just stop it from happening. So... Well, it's disappointing you don't see that down below here. I think it's... I do actually like how they actually incorporated that into part of the fight. That basically, yeah, you are also part of the, the stable time loop. And that you essentially saved yourself from your own doom. While you were simultaneously out here and there at the time. At the time. Time, time travel is messy, guys. It, it, it is. Yeah, just go with it. Just go with it. Absolutely, just go with it. Will you stop getting hit by everything? So what else can I talk about with the story? Um, I'm probably gonna take a hit from one of that. No, okay. Timing is different from where it is in Savage. Okay, but I can understand the different approach, but at the same time, this thing focuses more a bit too much on the goblins. Now, I'm not going to say Coil was, oh, you know, did the story so much better in, in that regard, but because basically the story, the Binding Coil, was not about Bahamut. It really wasn't. Uh, that was just an afterthought. I, well, I wouldn't say afterthought, but it's more used as the framing device for what is actually going on with our companion, who the story is actually about. Newsflash, guys. But here, like, I don't get any sense of, of history or, or, or anything with Alexander. He Okay, he was built as a living, moving fortress. Okay, yeah, thanks for stacking on me, guys. Now I'm gonna wait for the first set of this. So yeah, he summons himself again. No, there he is. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm waiting to happen. All right. Make sure I'm not affected by that and end up dying again in the process. Barely made it out of that one. Okay. Okay, crisis of red, guys. We'll be fine. Totally fine. 
Kind of stinks when they let somebody, one of the healers, die by virtue of failing to stack, but. So, another huge disappointment about the story, and I'm sure people are probably sick of me bitching about Yastola. But, she serves absolutely no purpose in the story. Whatsoever. There is nothing she does that can't be contributed by literally pretty much anybody else. And by that virtue, Sid is mostly just as useful as well. I really think they, they, they should have just left it to Biggs and Wedge, because they're the ones doing most of the hard work, and it would be just absolutely fantastic for them to kind of strike out on their on their own and have their own little bunch because they're, they're smart, okay? They're smart. Like, they built the mana cutters for crying out loud, alright? So... It's not like they could handle this by themselves. I mean, the one purpose Sid has is like, they, they should have just relegated him to, like, Link Pearl duty. That, you know, like, bad yeah, Biggs and Wedge could call him up for advice, but he didn't need to actually be here. And the only purpose Yastola serves is Sid borrows her goggles at, at one point. But they they could have just made up some bullcrap about finding a spare pair of those kind of goggles just laying around some kind of idol shire. I mean, it was Charlene Colony. I'm sure they have a bunch of shit lying around, you know. Maybe the goblins found them and they didn't know how to use them and we ended up borrowing them and putting them to use that way. Like her, like your soul's whole purpose is let me go consult Master Matoya on this and then when she does and something come actually comes of it and ends up being not only do you not get to see those stupid devices in action but they end up being 100% useless anyway. There's no point to her being here. She's here because she's somebody's creator's pet and it really kind of annoyed me and especially so and again I know people are probably sick of me bitching about Eustola but she's got so much potential to actually be useful and actually be an interesting character and every chance they get they just completely fucking squander it and it angers me so much so it's not so much I hate her I hate what they've done with her and it's making me just not like her in general as a result of it so now what So we just kicked crap out of Alexander's consciousness or, or whatever? I don't know. That that just, I mean, that did just come right the hell out of nowhere. Still have the problem of, uh, Evil Gobby still have the name of Codex. Yeah, Flow of Aether. Yeah. She has a name, Yastola. Please use it. I'm sure she's worried about her selfish friend. Guys, be on your guard while coming up here. We haven't dealt with the evil gobbies yet. Seriously? Seriously, you guys are like practically just begging to be walking into a trap right now. Uh, somebody shoot him, tackle him, something? I can't believe that they are this stupid. Once they discover that the journal has gone back in time and that's how Quick Thinks knows everything that's going to happen, um, you should have figured out that the only reason they kidnapped Ron Rocks in the first place was because the book told them to do it. Wait, what?
Okay, you get some points back for doing that. She has a name! Well, power's mostly out, but the lights are still on. Yeah, so maybe we want to get out of here before that happens. Like, what would happen to us if we're, like, inside this damn thing while, the, while he, like, fades from existence? Uh, no, let's take the codex and get the hell out of here. So we we just we literally just did that. Yeah, time travel does weird things to you. Okay, guys, yeah, why are we all standing around? Take the codex and get out of here. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, somebody shoot him again. Oh, can you guys not hear all that clanking? Uh, no, she shot him in the head, back in the head, point blank. That was not a we, that was her. She's a flesh wound. Oh, somebody go over there and tackle him or something. Right, let's just undo all the work we literally just did. Okay, see, wedge panicking, I get the rest of us standing around. Yeah, we're all dumb. You know, if Ellie Zay were here, she would probably be like, what the fuck is wrong with you all? Damn. 
can't stop him. Oh my. <sighs> See, this is what I, I really, I hate in any sort of media. People standing around acting stupid because the plot demands it. There's no reason anyone can't get over there and just push him out of the way or something. Nothing is preventing it. Then we're not surrounded by guns or other gobbies or anything. There's no electrical force fields. There's literally nothing going on. Just go over there and at least attempt to do something. It may not work, but attempt to do something. Or maybe have Ron Rocks, you know, go and actually wrest control of it from him. Or we can just blow up the book and electrocute him in the process, I suppose. Man, that works. Quite absolutely no effort on our part. Gee, it's almost like primals are sentient! Did you miss where Alexander just shot us in the face and we barely got out of it in time and we just actually discussed it? Good. Now, quickish, Chola, come up with a genius plan to actually do that. Make yourself useful. C can we not stand around like a bunch of schmucks? Now you made Round Rock sad. So is this an Alien 3 ripoff? Yeah, can we now initiate plan get the fuck out of here? care about the night. You're the one who threw yourself into the damn core.
So, yeah, Alexander can pretty much just calculate any possibility that is going to happen in the timeline. And instead of actually doing anything, he's like, yeah, no, time's fine just as it is. I'm going to just scarpel the fuck out of here. So yeah, like, robot logic here, that, yeah, I'm, I'm not even gonna go into that, it, it seems pretty obvious, yeah, I, I'm the problem, let's destroy myself, is, is pretty much what it, what it boils down to do. Cause I work for a higher power, dang it! Hi! Yes, but the mastermind the whole of this time loop is setting it Robot Kitty. And I wish I was kidding. And that is both absolutely, completely, stupidly absurd and also stupidly hilarious. Yeah, the Essens want that thing too, so we might as well try to get away from them as well. So, yeah, th 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 this is their way of essentially writing out plot elements from 1.0 and just and just removing them from the timeline. No pun intended. Well, the voice said Alexander would trouble us no more, so... Yeah, it does. But... I never gave a crap about her... T no, I didn't want to talk to Wedge. I'm trying to deselect him. I never gave a crap about her in the first place. Rocks is missing again. You know, does Slowfix know any of this? <laughs> I mean, he's right around the corner in Idleshire, and his daughter keeps going missing and getting kidnapped. And damn if I know anything about how a goblin gobbies raise their children or or what time they come of age or, or anything. But I, I find it kind of hilarious that you know we're, we're citizens of Slowfix's city, and, and we can't even protect his damn daughter. <laughs> Aww. 
Come on, glowy stone does not work anymore. So, so yeah, uh, uh, I'm calling a bit of a BS on on this. Like, I understand why it's there. I, I mean, good on them for whoever wrote the codex to like kind of have a, a self-limiting thing. That yeah, if you don't believe if you don't believe in the ideas, well, in the ideals written within, well, too bad you can't actually read them, you suckers. But at the same time, I can't help but wonder if this is it's just a cheap plot device rather than having actual meaning to it, if you know what I mean. Uh, no, his face is actually sticking out from the top of it. Can't we just, like, drop it down one of his steam shoots or something? I think that's what the kitty wants. So I so I find it kind of amusing that while the player knows the true nature of the cat, the rest of us don't ever find that out. We have no idea that this is the time traveling robot cat sent by Alexander to to kind of keep the stable time loop going and, and to, to, and to actually like keep it just a stable time loop and everything else flowing normally outside of time. Wh whatever. Time travel is hard, guys. Y'all know what I mean. Yeah, how about a meal? You guys never feed me. Yeah, you two get out of here. You you all were completely useless to the actual narrative of the story. Anything the two of you ever did could have been given to literally anybody else. Waste of time. Season Wedge, I'm with you. This should have been your excellent adventure. You haven't done anything wrong. Okay. You're gonna do just fine here in Idle Shire. It's like a library, like way down the road over there. All sorts of knowledge. Oh, you would love it up there. 
You would totally love it out there, Back Ricks. He has a mask on! So, 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 yeah. Yeah. They're, they, they're, like, became their own grandparents. Sort of thing. So it looks like the glowstone did end up getting delivered. That's cool. Time travel, you guys. Just go with it. You yourselves got transported into the past, and the whole original summoning of Alexander was you actually being transported three years into the past to, to make that crap happen. Like... Why is this? I, I know time travel is, is hard and complicated and time loops and paradoxes and, and all that other smarm and whatnot. But it's just really so hard to believe after all the crap you have been through. Yeah, we'll just play dumb. Yeah, come up with me more often and get away from the cheat for once. Alright. You guys deserve your own little story. So, yeah. That is Alexander! Hooray! So, I, I talked most about what I wanted to actually kind of review about it while we were fighting Alexander Prime and all that. But, but my biggest disappointment about this story is Mide, or whatever the hell her name is. Now, I'm not the kind of person who believes every character needs to be a goody two-shoes or, or anything like that, and she certainly is not. She, she's not evil, she, she, she has a good heart on the inside, but the main thing that I really have a problem with, and that really makes Coil actually set itself way apart from this, and again, this is just me because I'm a very, like, character and plot development kind of analysis type of person. And with Koyo, Alize actually gets character development. That's basically what the whole story ends up boiling down to in the end. Mine doesn't change as a character. She, go she comes in here, she has one desire to see and quote-unquote be reunited with her lover and that's exactly what happens in the end. She gets exactly what she wants, she suffers absolutely no consequences for it, she doesn't change at all, she doesn't change her ideals or, or anything like that. She goes through no sort of trauma in the process. She has a goal and she gets it. There's absolutely no conflict there whatsoever. Whatsoever for her. Like, I can totally be willing to buy the whole... Yeah, well, she's she's not malicious that she's only in it for her own personal selfish gain. I can get, I can totally get behind that. It doesn't make me actually really want to like the character. But there's a lot of types of things you can actually do with that type of character if you actually introduce conflict to them. And they didn't. At all. It's like she, she she's, I mean, she gets actually more purpose in the story than, than Sid or Yashola does. But nobody in this story but Round Rocks actually changes as a result. 
Like, it's just, it's so, and, and you can't argue, oh, well, it's time travel. Like, by the end, we've probably all forgotten about it, so it might as well be like it never happened in the first place. And, yeah, okay, but that, that doesn't make the story compelling if it's all just, you know, ends up being erased or frozen or time or whatever. It all becomes, in the end, well, what was the fucking point? You know? And while I will say, again, that Aesthetically, the fights I thought were a lot funner, so so mechanics-wise and gameplay-wise, yeah, I did think Alexander was a bit better than, than Binding Coil. But when it comes to a storytelling device on various, various accounts, yeah, I'm sorry, Coil absolutely just, just blows it completely out of the water. Alexander didn't start actually getting interesting until they introduced the time travel mechanic, but even from the beginning, though I didn't really comment on it, while I was I was doing this, when I was personally going through the Alexander story, like as it's unfolding, the thing that intrigued me most is the cat. Because the cat is just like looming in the background, and my impression from the beginning that the cat was gonna pull an incident similar to what the cat in Chrono Trigger in Ozzy's Fort kinda pulls, where the cat like pulls a switch and Ozzy gets totally uh, get, gets the trap door open from underneath them. And essentially that is kind of sort of what happens when both Backrex and Quick Thanks do get head-butted in the ass to, in order to drop the logbook. But, like, I'm like, that cat is up to something. I'm like, that, that's just not just a pet. I'm like, that cat has significance somehow. I didn't know where, and I didn't know if it was, the cat was going to be a mastermind who screwed us over or who screwed the gobbies over. I didn't know. I was about half and half toward that. But, when the silent robot cat is more intriguing than everything else that's going on around you. And granted, you probably were supposed to kind of notice that, hmm, suspect that the cat was up to something. But when the cat actually not only has more importance, but grabs your attention more than everything else that's going on around you, that should tell you that whatever else is going on around you, there's a problem with that. And, and I know a lot of this is just me because I'm the, one of the few people who actually give a shit about the plot to this and character development to this kind of depth. But why have a story at all like this in, 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 such, a, in such a very mythos and lore heavy game to the point where, yeah, they have like a 300 something page lore book. And a lot of it is extra material that's not even in this game. Like, this game is, is very lore, very, very, very lore heavy. And then they, they just blow it on this story. And they kind of just left me with a mild, sour taste in my mouth. Not that it was completely terrible, but after Coil, and granted they were, it, it was a huge pair of shoes to actually have to fill. And I do can appreciate that they tried to take a more comedic tone to it. And, and just basically, instead of telling a very serious story all over again, they tried to take a different approach to it. So I, I can appreciate the attempt, but I feel like they didn't put enough emphasis on where it should have been. There's a lot of things that are glossed over, including that the Gobbies are the ones building the robots, and, you know, how they got the knowledge to build this robots. Is it actually in the journal? Is it from the being able to read the Enigma Codex? Because as we find out, yes, Quick Thinks can read the Enigma Codex. Like, like where? I mean, we know goblins are tinkerers and things like that, but we've never seen anything like this, you know? Like, Brute Justice is quite a bit different than what we've seen of, like, the Gob Widows and the Gob Tanks that we've seen from Goblins elsewhere. So, like, where the hell? Like, what? What? Like... Like, I wish it almost been... had almost been more Alexander's natural defense mechanisms. Because it was built as a utopia, and obviously, while you're... It is natural to think you wouldn't necessarily have weapons on a fortress utopia at the same time. Considering it was capable of moving place to places need be, you would think it would have some sort of override for some kind of defense mechanism somewhere. Or even so, have the inside of Alexander actually be actively attacking us. Like, things that are already built as part of it, just going absolutely haywire and going... And it's actually attacking against us. You know, like, take some of the, you know, block off my path. Something, you know, blow more steam in my face and not just use it as a mechanism for... For, for moving transport while inside the instances, like, something. 
And I know, obviously, Alexander's goal is, is to put history back on its course. So, obviously, he doesn't really want to harm us. But then he's, like, fighting us to, like, prove that, like, we're, we're worthy. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, it, it almost seems like it was a jumble of, of decent ideas. And they just, like, threw them all in a bowl. And then when they when they picked them back out again to figure out what they wanted to do, they, they just kind of, like, like jenged it on, on the countertop rather than actually go through with this with a fine tooth comb it, 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 it feels a bit too cluster fucked for my liking like the th it's, it's one thing to have a story make you go like what what and like have disbelief but amuse disbelief but this one left just left me with too much okay seriously what the fuck is going on okay what am i looking at Wh what is the importance here what's going on at least with coil they were all Alagon actual Alagon defense mechanisms and and bioweapons that were intentionally sealed inside dalla moon like the Alagons like fucking thought this through but the writers i don't feel really thought alexander through enough or at least it didn't go through enough edits to get that information that should have been out there actually out. So yeah, I'm, I'm putting this on lack of time. They didn't have somebody be able to edit it and go with, through it with a fine tooth comb and make sure everything was completely sound. Again, the story is not terrible. Was it enjoyable enough to actually sit through? Absolutely. But especially compared to Coil, yeah, no, no, I just wasn't feeling it. Was not feeling it at all. And I'm hoping they, they kind of correct themselves with Omega and realize where they they both succeeded and failed with Alexander. Because even mechanically with the fights, yeah, Savage was had its own issues mechanics-wise. Which they thankfully mostly corrected. But hopefully for Omega and 4.0, this will be better. So thank you for listening to my ranting on the story. I'm sorry for all the butcher editing, but with 12 separate instances, I have to make cuts to sit there in Duty Finder for hours and hours and hours on end, waiting for things to happen. So thank you very much, friends. I hope I didn't bore you too much to death, but you probably would have turned on the, on the video by now, yeah, had I done so. Farewell, everybody.